Mercy, Matthew Boyce. Yes, yes, that is. I think it was six minutes, but I'm not sure on the book. Five to seven. Five to seven, okay. So, uh, my, the title of my speech is Have Mercy, and no, I will not enrapture you with an Elvis Presley impersonation. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Instead, I will take on the oh so light topic of cancer and a possible cause of cancer. So, we do know that there are certain proven risk factors for cancer tobacco, radiation cancer-causing chemicals, some viruses, genetics. What are some other possible causes that come to mind? Anybody here have, yes? Eating too many vegetables. Too many vegetables, okay, great. That's possibly a cause. Anybody else? The environment. Environment, okay, environment. Chemicals in the uh, uh, motion supply in this case. Okay, very good. Um, chemicals that get into your system, yes? Uh, extreme stress. Great, stress. <clears throat> so you hit the, the nail on the head with stress. So I will be talking about stress and its relationship to cancer. Uh, first off, for the past few decades, we've believed that stress has a very close relationship with cancer, that it's stress essentially causes cancer. And the reason for this is we know that stress affects the immune system. Stress brings the immune system down. So in a stressful time, you're more likely to catch a cold, get the flu, things of this nature. We also know that the immune system helps us, uh, helps protect us from cancer. There are natural killer cells that target cancer. They search out and assassinate these sinister, sneaky cells of cancer. And when you're stressed, these cells go away to some degree. So it's a very, very simple equation. Stress harms your immune system, so stress causes cancer. However, in the last 10 years, there's been more research that's revisited the old research and called into question some of the findings. And we see that people who have very compromised immune systems, for example, AIDS patients, whose immune system has basically ground to nothing, that these people actually don't have as much cancer as we would have expected. And in fact, for some types of cancer, there's no real difference in rates. Breast cancer, prostate cancer, <coughs> colorectal cancer. Now, AIDS patients do have certain cancers that are actually very specific to AIDS patients that are more common. But the whole question of stress and cancer is a very big one right now. It's very contentious, very hot topic. But it appears that stress may not be quite the cause of cancer that people once thought it was. Now, we also believed that stress could cause tumors to grow faster, that the outcome for stressed patients was worse than it was for for patients who were not stressed. Uh, one study supported this that showed that patients who were diagnosed with terminal cancer, late stage cancer, who attended uh, support meetings, that these people lived on average 18 months longer than people who did not attend support groups. However, these findings were hard to, to repeat and they ended up revisiting this study, and they found something really interesting. Patients who attended support groups took their medications regularly. They took their medications with each other. They kept each other on the program. They made sure that their friend was not missing doctor's appointments. Whereas people who did not attend support groups would miss a day because cancer drugs are awful. They would take a day off. They would not do cancer, a particular drug for a day or two. This may actually explain more so than the actual lack of stress that is resulting from the, the meetup groups. So why I think this is important is because just the other day, 
I heard somebody say, just overheard a conversation, and he said, without stress, there would be no cancer. And if you look up in Amazon.com, stress and cancer, you will find a book. There's a book I just looked up. It said, the only answer to cancer. One chapter says, stress, the root of all diseases. Another chapter says, there are no incurable diseases, only incurable people. And I think to myself, for people who've been diagnosed with cancer, or even with really any disease, it's very easy to blame yourself. And I think that it's important to have mercy and compassion for yourself and for others. And if you think that your 50 hour work weeks or your 60 hour work weeks or your difficult relationship or your terrible boss caused this cancer, then not only are you dealing with the illness, but you're dealing with guilt and shame. And I think that's really an inhumane uh, state of affairs. It shouldn't be that way. So if you know somebody who's dealing with a diagnosis that's, that's serious like this, I encourage you to talk to them and make sure that they are not busy blaming themselves or recriminating themselves for, for the illness. That's my talk. Thank you.